Magneto enters the chat. Last week, I worked on Rogue, and added cell shading to the figure, giving her a more show accurate look. It turned out pretty good. Check it out if you're interested. I've been on this X Men cell shading journey for over a month now. As much as I want to work on Cyclops or Gambit, I want to save them for down the line. The reason is because cell shading is a bit draining to do. I want to save the fun ones for last and get the more challenging ones over with first. That is why I want to do Magneto this week. I am not a huge fan of this look of his. His other look is just too iconic. But I don't want to skip this Magneto because my goal is to give all my X Men figures a cell shading treatment. So, let's, let's deconstruct, deconstruct this figure. figure. There is an FAQ on the paint and brushes I use in the description box below. I have mixed feelings on this figure. On one hand, I think it's very well made. But on the other hand, the colors don't look that interesting. In the show, he got these pink highlights on his black suit, giving him that unique look. But because none of the figures from this wave got any cell shading done to them, this Magneto ends up with a muddy purple colored suit. I get what they're going for. It works for a non cell shaded Magneto, but it just doesn't look as cool as he does in the show. And speaking of cell shading, the cell shading on this Magneto is very similar to Venom and Symbiote Spider Man. My least favorite kind of cell shading on the figure. Instead of adding shading colors to the figures, I have to add highlights around the edges of the silhouette, which is impossible to achieve on a three dimensional object. There will always be angles that just don't look right. But thankfully, Magneto is wearing this cape that covers most of his backside, so that should help hide some of the weirdness. I don't have a lot of faith today, but I learn a little bit more every time I do a cell shaded figure. My goal is to do a slightly better job than what I did with Symbiote Spider Man. So. Hello, this is Ken. I like making things. Whether it's repainting my figures or making diorama displays, I love making things look awesome. My goal is to elevate my figures so they can shine on my display. Join my DIY venture as I ask myself the same question every week. Can I make it? Let's start with the suit. I'm gonna paint it all black first. I guess there are two ways to approach this. I can either do all the pink highlights first and then paint the black around them, or paint the suit black first and add the pink highlights after. I'm gonna do the latter, because it's a little bit easier. The issue I may encounter is that it may take more coats of paint to get to full opacity since I'm painting on black. But I'd rather do that than to try and maneuver black paint around the fine pink details. That said, I still have to be very careful around the neck, shoulders, and the giant M. I don't want to accidentally stain those areas, especially with the M. I actually like the paint they use there. It's a nice dusty purple gray, and best of all, it's pretty matte already. Painting it by hand would have been a struggle. Gotta make sure I get all the areas around the joints as well. Alright, let me do a quick matte spray before I add the highlights. Okay, on to the highlights. My approach is going to be very similar to Symbiote Spider-Man. I'm going to add the highlights down the sides. When I did Symbiote Spider-Man, I didn't want it to look like a tracksuit, so I kind of mimicked the squiggly cell shading style they had and added squiggly lines here and there. But over time, especially after doing a couple of X-Men, I find that I prefer thicker, blockier cell shading. The wider the shading is, the better it looks in specific angles. But at the same time, it also means there will be certain angles where the cell shading just won't make sense. Such as the sides and the back. I never post my figures turned to the side or facing away from me. 
so I'm okay with sacrificing those views. This is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna look at that figure from the front and from 45 degrees to the side, and apply the pink colors to the edges at these angles, thickening the pink until the pink becomes part of the silhouette. The issue with this method is that it's gonna have this tracksuit look to it and it'll look really distracting, especially from the side. But luckily, Magneto has a cape that wraps around his body, so I don't have to worry too much about the back side and the left and right sides. Let's do a quick check. Let me turn the figure and see. Oh, okay. It kind of has this silhouette look. It does look a little weird from the side, but it's too late to change my plan now. Let me work on the other side. I'll go back and add more coats and refine the shapes later. My approach on this side is the same, but I'm gonna make it slightly asymmetrical. One, to see what shapes work, and two, to make it look less calculated, if that makes sense. Okay, let's do another check. Alright, I like the overall placement of the cell shading. Let me add a few more coats to make the color fully opaque. You would think painting solid colors on a figure would be relaxing, but I actually feel much more relaxed when doing live action figures. With live action figures, I can isolate elements and work on them individually. But with cell shaded figures, I have to ensure the overall look is cohesive. Not only do the colors have to be in their correct tones, the placement and crispness of the cell shading also matters. Okay, I like the colors. Now let me go back in with the black to do some cleanup work. Sharpen and reshape the lines a bit. Alright, before I move on to the cape, let me dust a thin coat of paint over the flesh tone. It is already pretty matte, but it's a touch too vibrant. Magneto is pretty pale in the show. Okay, on to the cape. The purple they used on this Magneto is pretty good, but I want the figure to lean more cool toned. Magneto is just that cool, you know? Alright, let's add a bit of shading to the cape. I'm gonna darken the color a bit and apply it to the folds. Last time with the other Magneto, I accidentally made the base color too dark, and I had to do the reverse. Add the main color over the shading color. That was not fun. This is much easier to do. Done. Let's seal everything with the matte spray. On to the faces. These heads are really well sculpted. They're very expressive, and best of all, they look cartoonish. But they are missing the cell shading details, which is fine on their own. But they won't match the rest of my X-Men if I leave them as is. So let me add a bit of shading to the sides of the faces. The cell shading on Magneto's face seems to be a bit more intense around the eyes in the show, probably to age him up and give him that more experienced look. Next. The shading on his hair. I try to do like a pale light purple color by mixing purple with some tan color, but it turns out light pink. Oh well, not the color I was going for, but it still kind of works. So let me add them here and there to give the hair more depth. And last but not least, the black outlines. Some of you have said that the Gundam fine tip pens are better suited for this. There is a comic store near me that sells them. I'm gonna get some and try them in the near future. These Micron pens are okay, but they do clog up quite easily on painted areas. Okay, I'm done. This is the best I can do with the black pen. Not the cleanest job, but overall it adds to that cell shaded look. 
especially around the eyebrows and mouth. And with the heads all painted, let's take a look at the before and after. Alright, here's Magneto with cell shading. The first thing I noticed is just how much more intense the colors look with the changes. The black suit with the pink highlights turned out pretty good, especially from the front and turned slightly to the sides. That said, the highlights still look a bit strange from the side, but thankfully the cape swoops in and covers most of it. The cell shading on the faces also look much better on the body. Everything just blends together nicely. What do you think? Do you like what I've done? Let me know down below. You know what's interesting? When I was adding the pink highlights, I considered making them skinnier. Almost like lightning bolts. Because they look a little bit too thick. But with the cape on, the pink highlights actually look to be the right size in most angles. But I hope this is the last figure with this kind of cell shading. It is just too challenging to pull off convincingly. Especially when the character doesn't have a cape. I didn't love this figure going in. The classic red Magneto look is just too iconic. But I have to admit, this design is growing on me. The colors are more striking, and there's this presence to Magneto. He actually looks really powerful. But that scarf cape he's wearing defies physics. How does it stay on like that? Is it made out of metal? Anyway, let's end this with a photo shoot. You know what's also really interesting? I normally prefer neutral expressions on figures because they work better for most poses. But for this Magneto, he does look pretty decent with a neutral face. But that angry face works so much better for him. Originally, I was like, ugh, I got another face to paint. But I'm glad I didn't skip it. I love how good this angry face turned out. It works so well in action poses. Great job on that scalp, Hasbro. Alright, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Give it a like and subscribe to my channel to continue on this cell shading journey with me. Part of me wants to give up, but your support pushes me forward and keeps me motivated. And I hope my videos inspire you too. Stay inspired and I'll see you next week. I can make it, so can you.